Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to create a seamless repeating halftime pattern in Adobe Photoshop. This is a seamless repeating pattern. If you used it to fill a document the size of a billboard, it would repeat perfectly. Now the document sizes that we're using here are critical to get right. So I'm going to start with a document that is 512 pixels by 512 pixels. It's critical to use dimensions that are multiples of two because otherwise you won't be creating a repeat. I've got the black and white set here as my fill colors. You can just click here to select these as background and foreground fill. We'll choose filter and then render and then clouds. This clouds filter creates a document when you use something that is 512 by 512 or a multiple of two, it creates a seamless repeating pattern. But when we apply the other filters to it, it can't be relied upon. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to double the size of the document. I'm unlocking the background layer here. I'm pressing control J three times. That's command J on the Mac that creates three additional copies of this layer. Now we need to double the size of our document by choosing image and then canvas size. Double 512 is 1024. We'll make width and height 1024. I'm going to send all of these layers to the bottom corner here to make life a bit easier. I'll click OK. I'm going to select the Move tool here. Up here, there are little three dots on the toolbar. Click it and from the Align to Options, select Canvas. Now we can go and select these layers and send them. I'm going to send this one to the left and to the top. I'm going to send this one over here, which is the top and to the right. This one here is going to the bottom right. So here's the right and here's the bottom. When I click away here, I should not see any seams in this document at all. I'm going to select all of these layers, click on the top one, shift click on the bottom one, right click and choose merge layers. This gives me a single layer with everything on it. I'm going to make a smart object of this, so I'll right click on this layer and choose convert to smart object. Now we'll apply our halftone filter. We'll choose filter and then pixelate color halftone. The maximum radius, I can use the number 8 or I could also use 16. I'm using 16. It will give me bigger dots. I'm also setting all of my channels to the exact same value so I will get a black and white halftone. I'm also using the number 45 because that gives me a really nice arrangement of the dots in the halftone. They're less grid and they're more on a diagonal arrangement. So 16 for the radius, 45 for every one of the channels. Click OK. You'll see here that the dots are quite large and they're running into each other. We can separate them by making the clouds filter effect a little bit more grey than black. So I'm going to double click on the bottom corner here to open up the embedded smart object. I'll add a new layer here with layer, new adjustment layer and go to levels. Click OK. There are two sliders here. There's one underneath this histogram. There's another one down here. You're going to take the bottommost one and just drag it across to the right. That's going to remove the black from the image, make it more grayscale. Close the document. This is an embedded smart object. Click its close button. Say yes because you do want to save it. And when you come back in here, you'll see that the dots are now separated. It's a nicer looking half tone. At this point, if you want your half tone to be more gray than black, you can do that. Let's go to the layers. I'm going to target this topmost layer, which is my pattern. Well, it's going to be my pattern in a minute. I'll choose layer, new adjustment layer, levels. So I'm going to apply that same levels adjustment here to make the black more gray. Just like that better. Back into the layers panel, I'm going to my shape tool. So I'm going to click here on the rectangle tool. I'm going to select a fill, which is just a color, doesn't matter what color. I'm selecting no stroke at all. I will click once in my document and I'm going to create a square that is 512 pixels by 512 pixels in size. That is the exact same size as our starting document. Again, this is critical stuff. This is the size of our pattern swatch. So what I'm going to do is control click on this layer thumbnail on a Mac. That would be command click. 
I'm going to turn off the visibility of this layer because I don't want the pink to show up. But I can now see that I've got a set of marching ants in my document. I'll choose Edit and then Define Pattern and click OK. To test this, we'll need a new document. It needs to be larger than our pattern size. Of course, our pattern size is 512 by 512. So let's make a document 1400 by 1400 because that document just happens to be sitting there for me to use. I'll open the Layers panel, unlock the background layer here, go to my Patterns panel. You can get to that by choosing Window and then Patterns. Click on this last object, which is our pattern. And if we have a look in here using the Zoom tool, you'll see that there are no seams in this pattern. We would expect the seams to be around the 500 mark because that's where the repeat is. I've got my rulers showing you can do that by choosing View and then Rulers. That just allows me to see where my repeat should be. And if I can't see any seams there, then that tells me that my document is perfect. This pattern that we have created here is a seamless repeating pattern that you can now go ahead and sell or you can use in your own projects. As I said, when we created this, the size of the initial document is critical. I made one 512 by 512, but you could make one 1024 by 1024. And in that case, your pattern swatch would be 1024 by 1024. I just suggest that the first time you make this design that you stick with my measurements and do go and double the size of your document and step through this. Don't think that you can shortcut it because you do run the risk of your pattern not being seamless. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.